There are only a few designers in the world who are as extremely successful, yet still completely down to earth. James Martin is one of them. And he's gonna share a little bit about how to be vulnerable and transparent in a world of facades. Welcome back, Design Today team. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of Design Today featuring James Martin, AKA Made by James. I'm your host, Dylan Winspear, and being that my birthday was just last week, I wanted to celebrate with you by giving you a little something of your own. From now till the end of the month, you can receive 25% off an hour-long coaching session with me by using the promo code BDAYGIFT. If you're feeling stuck or unsure of your next career move or can't seem to land employment somewhere, let me try my hand at getting you unstuck. I'll bring my 10 years of experience to the table to give you everything I've got. We can review your resume and portfolio, or we could do a mock interview if that's where you're struggling. We can also just chat about what you're struggling with and figure out how to get you ahead in the industry. It's completely up to you. Head to designtoday.com. On the website, you'll find the courses page and you can sign up for a coaching session there. Make sure to use the promo code BDAYGIFT at checkout to receive your 25% off. My guest today is actually a logo and branding hero of mine. I have followed him for years now and to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him today was incredible. James isn't out to please anybody by acting in a way that isn't natural or himself. Fortunately, he's a pretty good dude and has the ability to make friends in any room he walks into. He in part contributes this to his willingness to be vulnerable and transparent, something that we don't see all too often in the social media world. All the while, he says he's gained more traction in the design world as he's put himself out there, something we could all learn a little bit from. So let's get into it. Mr. James Martin, made by James, here in the electronic flesh. Thanks for joining <laughs> me, buddy. My man, it's good to be here. How are you? You well? I am doing incredibly well. Um, you know, there's not many things that excite me to wake up for at 8 a.m., but a podcast with Made by James is one of those things. That's how it feels. People call me Made by James more than they call me James Martin now. Do they which really? Is, which is a very <laughs> weird thing, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I quite like it. It is you what know, it is. You know, I need to start by telling you a quick story. Um, I yeah. started following you uh, a year or so back. I, I actually don't remember exactly when, but I started following you. You know what? It could have been years ago, actually. Uh, I got really into time it. Time does go quick. It does go quick. But I'm trying to like yeah. put it in like time frame, a timeline. I got really into hand drawing, uh, just different sketching and trying to do more sketching than digital forms of... Uh, you know, whether it be logos or that kind of stuff. But like, I really got into like the sketching stuff and and your posts that I would come across on Instagram, I would see these photos of this tattooed hand holding a pencil and some mm -hmm. little sketch. And I would look at that and I would like, uh, you know, really inspiring just as far as like quality. Um, yeah. And I go, you know, that's rad. Started following this guy. Didn't really know who he was, but I kept seeing his photos show up in this feed. And more and more, I would see this tattooed hand holding a pencil, you know, with the new logo there. And I started thinking to myself, I was like, these photos are so high quality that I don't believe it's a photo. I think this is a Photoshop. You know, I feel like he's taking <laughs> yeah. a digital version. I wish I, I wish I could use Photoshop that well. <laughs> he's taking a, a hand drawn and then he superimposed it onto this really good looking, you know, because there's a... Um, you know, there's a hand, there's the pencil, there's the pencil sharpener, there's all these little things around the photo yeah. that make up like the composition. But then I go, I was like, but I don't see very many tattooed hands in stock photography. So how is he pulling <laughs> yeah. that off? Yeah, with the exact same tattoo as well. And that's is, what I started yeah. picking up yeah. on. It's like, yeah. he's either got this guy on lockdown or that's actually him. And yeah. uh, that's what I started realizing. I was like, James Martin he's the real deal. Like this is not anything <laughs> Photoshopped. He's sketching and drawing all the time and yeah. he's documenting it and posting it for everyone to see. And that was super inspiring, man. I, so I, I appreciate this. Uh, you are definitely one of uh, my heroes when it comes to logo designers. It's just, it's, this is surreal for me. I thank you. Oh, that's, yeah, that's unbelievably kind. And I will have to, um, that man stuck in the cupboard, I will have to feed him at some stage and, and give his hand a wash. Um, <laughs> and you're telling me it's getting warm there. So make sure he's, he's getting plenty of cool. Yeah, yeah I'll give him plenty. I'll keep him hydrated. Don't you worry about that? But yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, so a lot of people talk to me about, you know, the, 
the refinement of my sketches and, you know, how detailed they are. You know, I spend a lot of time doing it. I've also been drawing for an extremely long time. You know, I've been mm -hmm. designing for 15 years, but, you know, I've been drawing for almost all my life. And mm -hmm. I always kind of say to people, like, when you see somebody drawing, like, a picture-perfect picture of, like, a dog, do you know what I mean? You know, and I'm sitting there drawing just a clean few geometric lines and, and people think it's some sort of Photoshop mock-up. Whereas actually, if you compare it to like painting the Sistine Chapel, sure. logo designs are pretty easy to draw in the whole grand scheme of things once you've got your process down. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 I, I find it actually just super humbling that people think I'd fake it, which is, which is really good. <laughs> well, in, in, in fairness, you know, my wife, she's a, uh, a fine artist, right? She does a mm. lot of oil, uh, paintings type stuff. And, uh, yeah. everyone would look at us and like, well, it's so crazy how you guys are both so artistic. And I'm like, Oh no, I could yeah, never do what she does. This. That's yeah. I my, could uh, my mother never do. I mean, she is, my wife's extremely talented when drawing as well, but my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law is, another level you know uh -huh. she's done some pictures for our, of our dog and stuff just for a photo she doesn't even kind of like um what do you call it um light box it and then trace over it she just does it from eye looks at it and the proportions are put, i mean i do not even understand and she puts blue in to a to a yellow lab and sure. i think how on earth did you see blue in there it's crazy. It's that, crazy that's stuff. incredible. It's a talent yeah. all on its own, but it, that should not diminish the skill it takes to do some of the work that I've seen you do. So oh, thank uh, you. Thank you. you're, you're doing incredibly well. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to, it, it's kind of cliche at this point because every podcast starts with like, tell me a little bit about your backstory, but yeah. James Martin was not uh, a logo designer. That was not the the dream for James Martin. I mean, I know there were some no. rugby rugby aspirations in there as well. <laughs> So yeah. tell me a little bit about that come up story and how you got into the position that you're in, because it evolved rapidly once you got going. Yeah, I, th I think it's I think it's the same with anything. As soon as you put your mind to something, it can happen fairly quick. But I mean, even since I started being a designer, I mean, I'm 10 years down with my own company now. So that's that's a decade gone. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, but, you know, I suppose like from, you know, from the get go, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was always, I say, I was always creative. I was never particularly intelligent, um, as, uh, intelligent or was it, as in when I related to like maths mm -hmm. and sciences and all that kind of stuff. I was definitely more on the design, technology, mm -hmm. art, creative side of it and obviously sporty. So, um, yeah, I did a lot of sport you know, when I was younger, a lot of art. Um, and then, yeah, I say never, my dream was never to, I mean, also like when I was kind of growing up, you know, being a creative wasn't really a viable career decision. You know, it was, right. you know, do a proper job and that can be a hobby. You'll never make any money out of art kind of thing. And you kind of mm. think, well, you know, everybody seems to be telling me this. I can't be making any money out of art. So maybe I should do something else. So I think, you know, my A-levels, um, I went to go and do geography, art and something else with the aim of doing something with geography or whatever I had to do. Um, but yeah, then I got kicked out of school. Um, bit of a drug problem. Um, bit of a, just turned into a bit of a rebel. And that happened quick as well. And then, yeah, left home. Left home at 17. Um, moved out of home, as I said. Um, and then just, yeah, basically ran off the rails doing drugs every day for a couple of years um and so i don't mind talking about it now because i can look back at it and think well you know i am where i am now and that's because of where i where i used to be but i think it's important not to you know you know, obviously there are moments in my past where i was kind of i do feel ashamed of some of the stuff i did but again i won't be sitting here talking to you if i hadn't gone through it so i think mm -hmm. it was obviously a part of my journey luckily i managed to get myself out of it so basically Literally, we're talking about cliches. I woke up one day and went, "What? What on earth am I bloody doing? You know, why? Why? What am I doing?" Um, the next day, I walked into the local college, um, did an art foundation, which is basically where you do like all like loads of different disciplines. So you do like um, so you'll do like fine art, you'll do sculpture, you'll do life drawing, graphic design, all these kind of things, all over the entire year. And at the end of the year, your tutor kind of sits you down and goes, well, you were uh, good at this, not so good at this, 
blah, 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 what do you think? And then he starts to give you slightly like, bits of career advice. And still at this stage, I had no, I had no idea that I was going to be a graphic designer. To be fair, I didn't really know what bloody graphic design was at the time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really, it wasn't really something that I never thought about or even really knew about. Because we're talking, you know, almost 18, 19 years ago now. Um, it wasn't the, the career path it is now. Um, and, and basically he said, I think, you know, you're, technical drawing skills are very good and I was like well I want to be a fine artist and he said well just try just go and do this just go and try this so I tried that for two years actually quite enjoyed it um because I, I always had quite a good eye for detail which yeah. probably didn't allow me to express myself as much as I thought I was within my fine art you know which is more free mm -hmm. you know feelings and all the rest of it whereas I was kind of like well that line needs to line up with that line you know so what that was I kind of didn't allow myself that freedom which is you know looking back at it now I can see he probably gave me the right kind of guidance there and then yeah from there I went to uni um, at uni um, I got a kind of part-time junior designer job at a local agency um, ended up learning more I more in six weeks there than I did in you know two two years, two years plus at uni. Um, so yeah, and then went there. I mean, this is a very short, quick story, but yeah, then went there for like um, four years and then start my own agency, Baby Giant. And now 10 years later, I'm sitting here talking to you. So it's been quite long. <laughs> yeah. I like how the last 16 years just sped up that fast. Yeah, I mean, I was dragging on, mate. I was dragging on. <laughs> All right. What, and, and that's fine. Cause we're actually going to get into some of those things that you learned along the way, because starting your own yeah. uh, design agency, I know that you felt like uh, you learned quite a bit and you learned, I guess, some of the yeah. hard knocks along the way, what to do and what not to do. Yeah. Uh, so for those who are becoming, you know, freelance designers at this point in time, what yeah. type of hard knocks could you save them from that you learned earlier? The, well, the first thing I would say is, try and get an agency job before you go freelance that's the mm. that's the that's the first thing i would say um purely because i mean as as creators we love being creative when you go freelance by yourself it's very lonely and uh will be you won't be doing creative but you won't be creative all the time there's right. the business side financial admin marketing advertising also there's all the other bits that go with it and i found the experience I gained from the agency, how to kind of um, chat with clients, how yeah. to organize my time, how to like time schedules, speaking to printers, um, yeah, project management, you know, the building relationship side of it with local partners and all this kind of stuff. I would never have done that without that agency background because when as soon as well, as soon as I went into Baby Giant. Although it's I suppose freelance, it's me and my me and my buddy Adio in it. But we, I learned so much. Do you know what I mean? I knew how to talk to people. I knew mm -hmm. how to market myself. I knew how the industry worked because I've been in it for five years. You know, I knew how to, you know, organize my days based around the workloads that I had on. So all of those, all of those mistakes. I think a lot of people, because people are now leaving straight out of college or like 16, 17, 18, going straight into freelance, thinking I'm going to sit here on Instagram, do a few posts and be a billionaire by the end, by the end of 2021. And it's, it's really not the way it's the, the way it works, to be fair. Um, you know, you have to be, you know, the front, you know, if you're going to be a freelancer, you have to own it. You have to kind of put yourself out there. You have to be, you know, showing your face, you have to be yeah. doing all these weird and wonderful things. Um, so with reference to answering your question, I mean, I, I would try, I would, what I would really try and say is if you can possibly, even if you get try and get a few interviews, even if you don't get the job, just try and integrate yourself into that agency world. I said, even if it's just a few interviews and you're talking to people who are more experienced than you and all the rest of it, because um, it does depend on, yeah. you know, what stage you are at your career if you're if you've been you know go if you're going freelance after two or three years in agency you've probably got it figured out almost if you're going into freelance straight out of college and no other prior work in your life and no, not knowing how to build those client relationships 
I would try and reach out to somebody that has done it. <laughs> um, just try and absorb yourself in the, in the industry and ask questions and be curious um, because there's there's so much more to that side of it than doing good logos or being a great print man or being the best layout dude on the planet. Sure. There's so much more to building. And I think that's why a lot of people get down. You know, they they think this freelance world, and don't get me wrong, you know, if once you get it moving, you know, I've been doing it for 10 years now. I love my life. I can pick and choose my hours, you know, all the rest of it, got a good routine, good cash flow, all the rest of it. But that's taken a decade to establish you know mm -hmm. and i think what happens i think what happens too too often i see is people try and go freelance try it for six months don't get any work then go to the agency <laughs> you know so and, and they just and wasted they try, six months and they're just wasting yeah, just gone poof you never yep. get those back whereas if you if you're if you're really really serious about being a designer as your career you know I think I'm only just getting started and I'm 15 years into my career. I've got mm -hmm. another 20, 20 plus years. So I'm not even halfway through my career. If you're year one, year two, you know, take the time to, you know, give yourself that kind of basis and that structure. You know, try and get an agent or even just try and just say to them, look, can I just come in once a day for free? You know what I mean? And just watch how it all works. Invest yeah. that time early on because, you know, I mean, you'll probably, most of you start your freelance journey way before I did, but you'll also have that background and you've still got, you've got to think, you know, you've got to think 20, 30 years down the line, not <clears throat> can I pay for my holiday next year, next week or next year. Right. You know, you've got to be thinking of the long game. And I think, I think there's too many short wins. People want a short win, a quick fix, you know, I'm going to go freelance because I can live my own life and which is great you know if you live with your mom and your dad and you're not paying rent and all this type of stuff but one day you'll have to step up and have a mortgage have a family yeah. and have yeah. this and you know making doing a few logos a year doesn't you know you'll soon figure out that that doesn't pay your bills right. um so yeah i think that's i know i think i've probably gone slightly off tangent there but that's what i would say is just try and gain some experience or mentor under somebody or do something For sure. um to kind of build that basis i would say is very important well let me ask you a follow-up question a couple of things that you you had said in there you know you learned skills at an agency that would have been harder skills to learn if you were just going to try and learn them jumping straight you know head headlong right into yeah. freelance work right yeah a uh, couple of those skills like running a business right accounts receivable yeah. like that type yeah. of piece of running a business did you take to that naturally or did that take a while to develop um i've luckily my business partner AD deals with a lot of that <laughs> okay so um, another key to success find a good business partner yeah i, I think <laughs> another key to success is realizing you can't do it all oh, there you um go. and i think I think that's, a, that's another thing people, I mean, I used to have a big controlling issue with reference to, I don't want to get anybody on board or work with anybody and you know, I'll turn away work because I, I can't do it myself. And that's what I still do with logo work. But mm -hmm. obviously as the agency's grown, you know, we've now got on more developers to help us with web stuff. We've now got on more animators to help us with the animation stuff. So I'm still in control of my baby, which is the logo design stuff, but the business needs to grow. And to grow, you need more people. You need more resources, more help. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's um, a big thing that I would say is, yeah, I mean, it took me a while to kind of figure that out. But, yeah. you know, not being, you know, asking for help isn't a bad thing. If you need to ask for help, that's actually a super positive thing because it means you're busy. <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Let me ask you about another skill. Uh, you talked about uh, the skill of like learning to talk to a client. Was that yeah. something that came natural for you or is that something you had to develop? Um, I've, I've always been extremely lucky. I mean, whether it's through my past or whatever, but I've never really give the toss what people think about me and that's 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 not me mm. being because I'm comfortable with myself now you know I've been comfortable with myself for a long time you know you either like me or you don't and I think my wife's always said to me I can go into like a like a, a room full of people I don't know and then within five minutes they're all my best friend <laughs> because I, <laughs> I'll just go up and talk to people and chat to people so I think that's kind of like a weird superpower I've got that I can you know I, I enjoy people. That's why, you know, 
for example, I, I love working with clients still. I love that one-on-one -on -one relationship or one like my relationship with their company. You know, a lot of designers would get to my stage and then jump on Skillshare or jump on affiliate marketing or jump on this to make their money because they can they can do that and they can make good money doing that. But I, I still love, you know, working with my clients. I still love that people person element to it. Um, yeah. And I think it's I think that's probably through the agency. I mean, obviously, when you start doing anything, as I was like, like I was saying to you before, like if you put me in, on a stage in front of X amount of people and I have to talk to them all, yep. it's going to struggle. But if you put me in a room with a thousand people and I get to spend time with them one on one, I'll, I'll love it. I'll lap it up. Um, and I think, as I say, that kind of agency early days you know, when you go to your first meeting as a junior designer with an actual client, you tend to sit back, you know, and you watch your, you know, your boss or your person who's higher, a higher level than you uh, kind of communicating and they, you can hear the, uh, the questions they're answering and how, they're, how the repartee or whatever you want to call it goes, you know, how they chin wag between each other. And what you do is you learn, you sit back, you listen and you watch this. Then the next time you can maybe jump in for a question and jump back out. And I think it's just about, you know, it's like repetition, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. you do something enough, you get better and better and better and more comfortable. And this is what I say to people about like, you know, IG TV video, or IG videos or stories or whatever you want to call them. You know, the first one's tough. You know, the first one was tough for me. You're mm -hmm. awkward. You're not too sure what to do or what to say. And you're looking at yourself and you think, I look like a twat, blah, 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 blah. I sound like a twat, blah, blah, blah. But over time you become more and more comfortable doing it. And I think it's, it's the same with anything. You give it time, it will reward you. Um, and you just, as I said, again, you just got to put time in. Time into everything, yeah. you get better at it. Yeah. Well, you're, you're heading down a track that I, I want to get to here because Instagram is not traditionally a place where you get the most authentic of, you know, you get the, the real sense of people. Instagram, yeah. traditionally is a mm -hmm. place where you can put your best face forward. Oh yeah. And you can hide. Yeah. yeah. And you can hide <laughs> all the, the gross things that are happening behind the yeah. curtain. And, yeah. uh, you know, you've talked about how you've always felt, felt comfortable in your own skin. Um, and you talked about how being real and being authentic is always something that's come a little bit more natural to you, but it doesn't come natural to everyone. No, it doesn't. No. So tell me a little bit then about what it's taken then for you to showcase this real, an authentic side of yourself on a, on a platform that doesn't really reward that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, firstly, I don't think there's, I don't think it's Instagram's fault. Do you know what I mean? That people, it's lots of, I hear a lot of people say, you know, social media makes me anxious. It's not social media. It's the people on social media, just posting their best life, posting mm -hmm. their, this posting their that. And that makes people anxious because they see it and they, you know, want to, they feel like they're not there or they're not good enough and it makes them feel anxious and all the rest of it. Whereas every, if everybody just was super honest on social media, there'd probably be no anxiety or, you know, stress at all. I mean, there would obviously be some, I know it's different for different people, but the, you know, I think the, I think the most important thing is, you know, I think I find it extremely easy to be myself. I, I see a lot of a lot of accounts on, on the gram or, you know, all over the internet or whatever. And I, I, I sit there and I think that must be so difficult putting that face on, you know, all the damn time, you know, mm -hmm. constantly being on as whatever you would call it. Yep. Um, you know, whereas, you know, I've kind of taken, I've kind of taken a bit of a different tact with social media where I've decided to, you know what? I'm going to share the logos that don't make it, that the client didn't like. I'm going to share some shit that's happening in my life. I'm going to tell you some crap that I went through when I was younger. You know, because that's ultimately, you know, what has made me the person I am. So I think it's too many people. I think the past can either make you or break you. Yeah. And I want my past to be a, a huge part of my future. You know, I'm not going to hide who I am. You know, when I was growing up, I was told, you should never get any tattoos in a visible spot because you'll never get any jobs. You'll never get this. You'll never get that. And I thought that's such a weird way to look at it. Why would, why would my talent or, you know, my persona or whatever, not get me the job if I've got tattoos? Why, why would that stop me from getting a job? And this, there was this 
world that I was in, I was thinking that just doesn't sound right to me. So I kind of thought, you know, I'm just going to be myself and at least then it's on my own terms um, and I can then go from there. But with anybody who's, you know, struggling to kind of be themselves, I, th I think that, I think overall that just comes with time. You know, it's like with anything, you know, some people are naturally gifted. Some people, um, it takes a little bit longer to do something. Some people um, might not have the talent that somebody else does, but they work bloody hard. I, I'm definitely not the best logo designer in the world, but I work harder than most logo designers on building my personal brand, building my business. And that's probably, and you know, the marketing side of it, you know, the promotional side of it. I work very hard at giving back as much as I physically can, because that's a part of my brand. And that weirdly mm -hmm. gets me more work. So, you know, there's, I say I'm by, by far the most talented designer, but I guarantee, well, I wouldn't guarantee, but you know, I, I, I think I personally work harder than a lot of other designers. Um, you know, I just kind of continually trying to develop myself and build myself and grow and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. But yeah. going back to, I suppose, the original question, which was, um, I, I would say time, you know, everything comes with time. And I think, you know, when I was 16, didn't know myself at all. As soon as I started hitting mid twenties, I was very comfortable with who I am and the direction I was going. Now, mid to late thirties, I'm solid, you know, I'm not changing for anybody and I haven't been, you know, and I've been that way. And, I, and so I think you just got to allow yourself time to figure out who you are. Because uh, that's, that's when you can really start to help people as well. You know, as soon as you know who you are, you can start to use that energy to in the right ways and the most effective ways. Um, so again, yeah, sorry, I keep babbling. I'm, you, haven't, you haven't spoken at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good, James. <laughs> You know, yeah. one of the things that as you're, as you're talking, these there's just triggering things in my mind, and I'm going like, you know, I, I said before that question that maybe the platform doesn't reward authenticity, but yeah. I, as I after I said that, I go like, actually, I don't know if I agree with that because yeah. I I feel like, and maybe it's been specifically during this pandemic where everyone everything's kind of been shut down, everyone's been forced to go home. Yeah. Uh, the bright lights and the cameras that they used to have in the studio aren't there anymore. And now you're getting more authentic, real behind the scenes, right? Sure, I can't tell yeah. you how many Zoom meetings I sit in that are interrupted yeah. by kids or yeah. that, uh, you know, have a <laughs> or dog or, yeah. Yeah, or a doorbell or a cat that yeah. walks across the screen or something like yeah. that. Like we are getting to a stage right now where I think people are, are comfortable maybe they're still not comfortable, but I feel like we are getting as, as a culture more accepting of this authentic behind the scenes yeah. uh, means of media coming forward. And sure. maybe that's played into your favor too, because that's something that's always come more natural than for you. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like as you've put out a more real and authentic James Martin that your fan base has, I don't want to say rewarded you for it, but do you think they've responded to that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've said, I've, I've, I think personally, yes, to answer the short, to the short question. Yes, I believe that that is true. Um, um, I answer all my comments, all my DMs, mm -hmm. nobody, I'm, I don't think I'm better than anybody. Um, you know, obviously you can't get on with everybody in the world. I get some people who I clash with on social media, but that's, that, that's life, you know, you're not mm -hmm. going to get on with everybody, but on the, on the whole, you know, you know bigger picture, I say I, I put effort into making sure people feel that they're worth something. Do well, you know what and I mean? you, yeah. And you've always made yourself accessible as well. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah I, I think, and I think a, that I think, speaks for it. Yeah. I think that's, a, yeah. Another big thing. I mean, I've, you know, if, you know, as a, as a human, you get good and bad vibes about people. You know, if I have a bad vibe about somebody, I'll generally say that's enough for me. Block. I just don't need that. But on the other flip side, if I hear, if I speak to somebody, I, I feel that they've, you know, over DM and they've got a general issue and they just can't work it out. I jump on calls with them. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'll jump on a call with them. I'll give them my Calendly link. Um, we'll have a Zoom chat for an hour. I do it at least once a week with one random human across the planet and just talk to them, you know, what's going on? See how I can help them with business. See how I can help with that. Absolutely no charge or whatever. It's just, you know, I'm trying to be personally, I, I kind of want to, as you say, I, I mean, the word you used was perfect, accessible. 
you know, mm -hmm. I, for example, I could have gone to Skillshare instead. You know, at the beginning of the year, I decided to put free content on YouTube, which I could possibly make money out of on Skillshare. But I thought, you know what? For me, I'm having fun doing the videos. I want people who've got money or don't have money to be able to find my stuff and find my contact and, and, and exactly and watch it and it being accessible. And I do the same on, you know, my newsletter. You know, everybody's got my personal email. If they've got a problem, I just tell them to email me and I'll email them back. Um, do you find your emails are flooded because of that? Do you think like it, people take yeah, advantage yeah. of that? Yeah, no, I actually don't believe people do take advantage. Um, you know, I only started building my newsletter, you know, a few, when was it? Probably be a few months ago, kind of mid-COVID. And there's, you know, three and a half thousand, almost 4,000 people on it. But, you know, I find that people, people aren't taking the Michael, so to speak. I was going to say something else, but I realised I've been swearing all the way through anyway. So it's <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, you know, people actually come up to me and, you know, I, get, I mean, that, this is one of the newest things that I've done this year is I've put a big effort and a big push into putting my personal brand a bit more out there. So I've launched the Made by James website, the newsletter, the YouTube, done a little bit of mentoring, just dipping in the water and to see if it's something I want to do in the future. And that side of my life, you know, so I've got my business, baby giant client front side, and I've got this other side, which is more of a nurturing mentor kind of helper guide to the younger designers and not all young designers some of them are older than me and all the rest of it but you know time wise and mm -hmm. or age wise I should say um and that I get just as much reward from somebody sending me an email saying I downloaded your free guide had my first client used it my client loved it you know I get just as much reward from that as I do completing a project do you know what I mean and that's something that I'm really you know really starting to enjoy is you know just the random messages you know because sometimes they can come at good points you know you know I'm, I'm the same as anybody I have good and bad days you know some days you kind of wake up and you're ready to go um other days you're kind of like oh you know not really feeling it but I'm still you know I mean that's another important thing even if you don't you know, if you if you are feeling a bit shitty and a bit down, just turn up every day because at least you're going to complete something. And I think you know, that's something I've learned over time. It's just my mind telling me I'm mm. not bothered, whereas I can still do it kind of thing. Um, but that's the, I can't remember, I've gone off on a tangent now. Um, something about, yeah, giving back. Well, I can't remember what it was. Um, well, you're, you're hitting on a lot of cool things. And I, I remember yeah. when, when you, you and I first talked, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned that you take these, well, well, first of all, let me back up. I have been super impressed with the people like yourself and a handful of others on Instagram who responded to little old Dylan Winspear who reached out and said, hey, I'd love to do a podcast with you. And the fact yeah. that, you know, the likes of yourself and others have, have responded and said, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to do it, speaks for like the caliber of character that uh, I think is still out there uh, that you can find on Instagram and you can find, I guess, behind the photo on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, and then you shared with me the story where, you know, you'll get a DM from somebody who's saying like, you know, I'm really struggling with this or I'm, you know, I'm having an off day and your willingness to jump onto a zoom meeting with somebody who you've only exchanged maybe a handful of direct messages with yeah, really speaks to like, and I'm not trying to butter you up. I don't want you to get this, no. uh, but it speaks to the quality of just character and, you know, James Martin and, and others are willing to go out of their way and help somebody who maybe didn't think that they were going to receive that help. And you're paying yeah. it forward. You've always made yourself accessible. You're paying it forward. And and one thing that you shared with me on the our first call is you said, you know, I'm paying it forward because, you know, this community has already done so much for me that I'm just yeah. turning around and helping out. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the, you know, it's for me, it's um, yeah, it's all about giving back, you know, this, the industry, you know, as I said, I'm only just getting started, but even to this day, you know, let's say a proper, you know, I can't, first agency job, I, as I said, I was doing a lot of stuff and not a lot of it very good. But, you know, since Baby Giant, so over the last decade, you know, it's kind of people have, you know, especially the Instagram community and other, other designers who I've met through there, given me a lot of encouragement. You know, my friends have given me a lot of encouragement. And my job now is, I mean, I never... I never planned to grow a following. That was never 
never on the cards. I was just, I was happy just being a designer, decided to share my process. That started to kick off a bit and it's just kind of snowballed from there, to be fair. Um, yeah. But from my point of view now, it's, you know, weirdly that following obviously attracts more clients. Um, I get more conversations around work with people, people who follow me, share me with their friends who are looking for stuff. So basically, you know, it has become quite a good advertising tool for me, but that's due to the people who engage with me and I engage with them. Um, and that's why I will never, you know, sometimes it takes me a while. You know, if you've got like 800 comments on a post, it does take a while to kind of get through them, but I get through every single one. Um, I, I try as hard as I can to get through every single one. If yeah. I, Obviously, if it's a few days late and people post like on a post maybe a year ago, I, I tend to miss it. But, sure. you know, I, my theory is that if you've, if somebody's taken the time out of their day to say something nice or something encouraging or give me a bit of feedback. Um, I will give them the time of day back to say, thank you, I agree, or I don't agree. <laughs> no, and I think that's such a, it's funny because it's kind of like a life hack right there. It's a secret to success. You know, somebody else puts time in, match that time, right? Give yeah, it back. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a great thing to, to put forward. I want to ask you about another character that I've seen you display on Instagram. And that's one that I think people shy away from wanting to share and it's it's vulnerability yeah. uh you know you can be real and authentic but still put on a smile um yeah. vulnerability though and sharing some of the things that are meaningful or important or inside or raw or emotional like yeah i, I the vulnerability is a scary piece to put out there but you know in just the last week you got pretty vulnerable on instagram and shared something that was pretty personal what spurred that uh the gut and my my lovely wife, you know, um, we've always, me and my wife are very similar and we all, I mean, again, like this, the social media world is what the people make of it. Mm -hmm. You know, people can use it to constantly promote themselves, constantly tell people how awesome they are. That's great. If that's how you want to use it, perfect. Whereas, you know, I, to, I actually want to use it to show people that, you know, there's a human side to the stuff. There's a person behind the stuff you're seeing. Yes, you're seeing logos. Yes, you're seeing, you know, design stuff all the time. But I've started to leak in the kind of more real stuff. My, my theory is if I can, you know, I mean, it is tough to do sometimes, especially the one about, you know, mine and my wife struggles with having baby and all the stuff at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, but for me, that was... That was a really good, um, obviously I asked my wife about it first, so don't, I didn't right. just go ahead and do it for like a, a selfish thing. It was more like she actually posted it before I did on her feed. I said, would you mind me posting it on my feed? And she said, no, I think it's important that people share. And I, I truly believe it's important that people do share this stuff. Um, I mean, but it, it, again, it does come down to character. Some people like to look after it themselves, nurture it um, and kind of, you know, just, you know, maybe that close friends, family or whatever. Whereas for me, I'm, you know, it's something that I'm going through. It's something that I want to share with people because it doesn't, it doesn't, people, it doesn't embarrass me. You know, it's, so I think a lot of these times this vulnerability is through like people, people will start to think worse of you or, um, or you'll be, you'll be, as I say, like embarrassed about the stuff you share. And I, my theory is if I can put it out there, it will allow, I mean, the amount of DMs, emails I've had from that one post about, dude, I'm going through exactly the same thing, you know, and from girls and from boys, you know, husbands talking to me, wives talking to me, girlfriends, boyfriends talking to me, you know, you know, the fact that, you know, they've read it and they can, they can feel from it. You know, they've, they've been there. They know how it's, they know how it feels. And sometimes I had one person the other day who said, you know, me and my wife are going through the same thing and we just haven't told anybody, but watching and reading your post has made me realize that I should be talking to my friends. You know, I should be telling my parents, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. He said, I was ashamed before about, you know, what people might think because I can't have a baby naturally and all this kind of stuff, which is, you know, which is the world we live in. You know, this the world and you know, other people kind of promote this persona of like, 
oh, look at how beautiful I am with my husband on a white, and, you know, we're on a beach with our new baby and our new mm-hmm. photo shoot. You know, they, that could have been, they could have had a miscarriage before that. They could have, that could have been an IVF baby. That could mm-hmm. have been not naturally conceived. But all they, all, as again, it's like we were talking about, all they show is the perfect picture of it happening. And that's all somebody receives. Years. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and I, from my point of view, I, I mean, I want to, I want my personal space made by James Brand to be a place where I, I want people to be comfortable with whoever they want to be. You know, if you're having a shitty day, you know, allow yourself to have a shitty day. If you want to talk to about something non-design related, I'll listen. You know, that, that's mm-hmm. kind of where I want to be because there's, you know, we've, I think is something I like to say a lot is that, you know, it's important to be a good human before a good designer. That's kind of where my where my mind is with it. You, you know what's funny is because I was actually just thinking a similar quote, which was nobody will care until they know how much you care. Yeah. And, and I think that's the same thing what you're saying right now is that you've demonstrated uh, your uh, you've demonstrated how much you care. And I think that's what's resonated. And then you've uh, found a way to transcend you know, you probably don't call yourself a, an Instagram influencer, but in the design definitely community, <laughs> and in the design community, we can't we can't shy away from that. You're definitely an influencer in the in the yeah. design community, especially. But when somebody gets vulnerable and real uh, and shares something that's maybe a little bit closer to the heart, I think that's when they transcend this influencer and they they humanize themselves to something that more people can relate to. Yeah. And I think people gravitate towards that. And so this, it's really easy for us. I always wanted to put just the best face forward, but yeah, I think people recognize inside that like, it's not, it's not real. And, you know, if you want to uh, connect with people on, on a deeper level, be willing to, to share something that's in a deeper level, be, be willing to show the, the real, the authentic, be, be willing to show the vulnerable. Cause I think that resonates so much more with people on a human level. Oh, very much so. And, and that's, you know, I, I've got to weirdly, not weirdly, but you know, I'm a big believer in practicing what I preach. You know, mm-hmm. if I'm talking about this being a safe place to be whoever you want, you know, this being, you know, a place where you can feel safe, you can be vulnerable, you can have a good day, you can have a bad day. You know, I I've got to lead. You know, I'm, and I and I'm going to lead. You know, I've got some. You know, I've I've even mentioned it to you. But yeah, you know, one day I'm going to share that particular bit of information we chatted about. But the mm-hmm. time's just not quite right yet. You mm-hmm. know, but there will be a time when the time is right. Um, but for me, it's all about. You know, I want people. I mean. As I, like you said, I mean, I don't want this influencer thing. It's happened. It is what it is. I've just got to use it to the best of my ability for good. to not, you know, and use it for good. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. And that's what I try to do every single day, um, as well as obviously do some cool logos. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, James, you're such a stud, dude. I appreciate your time. We're, we're unfortunately kind of hitting the, the max here. Um, I want to give an opportunity for those who've been listening that, you know, have not followed Made by James yet on Instagram, give them a chance to jump on to IG, uh, check out Made by James, but where else can they find you? Um, <clears throat> any, I'm always lurking around the internet somewhere. Um, so, I mean, if you, I mean, obviously I've got, uh, my website is obviously there's Baby Giant, which is my Baby Giant Design Co., which is my business company, but all my personal stuff is made by james.co. Um, I've got my YouTube, which is made by James. I've got my Instagram, which is made by James with dots in between the words. Um, but I think if you just type in made by James, I'll pop up. Um, and yeah, just, um, just anywhere, you know, wherever you, wherever you look, if you look hard enough, you'll find me. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, all, I'm always around somewhere. <laughs> Uh, thanks, James. I appreciate this. This has uh, been a really cool episode. I've, I've liked all these these insights that you shared about just being real, authentic, being vulnerable, paying it forward. Uh, you're a good human being, and I appreciate you responding to me saying that you'd be willing to do this podcast because it's been an absolute treat. Well, we can we can do um, version two next year. How about that? We 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 probably only just scratched the surface. <laughs> We're talking about that already. I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this has been another episode of Design Today. Thanks for watching.